all in year seven. I just want to introduce you to our environmental club. It's called Green Hand. And basically, it is a community-based environmental club that I will be running. And the question that we want to answer, can we be green at hand? and in our wider community. And I challenge you to answer, yes, we can. Now the main aim of the club is to build a relationship with us at Cannes and our wider communities and to try to solve some of our local environmental problems. Now these problems will be those that you will be identifying as members of the club. So we will be going out there into our communities and see what problems do we have and how can we come up with solutions? We may have to invent new things, we may have to talk to the press, we may have to do different things to see how can we solve these problems. Membership is simple. All you need to do is to apply. Now you need to send that application uh, in to me by next Thursday. So after next Thursday, after Thursday's assembly, I will be picking up these applications. We will go through them and only the best 20 applications will be considered. So you need to think of why should you be a member of this environmental club. If you've done anything environmental before, you should probably include that. If you already know some of your local problems that you might want to solve, you should include that. So you can also ask your teachers to probably help you to write as good and the best of a piece as you can to be considered as a member for this environmental club. Thank you.
then we've got a huge amount of people coming out of the school on a fire alarm. And that is why we put such a big emphasis on people when they mess about with the fire alarms and decide it's a good idea to mess about them. That's why you will get excluded like that. Okay? So, if you discover a fire, you should sound the alarm, uh, um, you should sound the alarm, so press the alarm, and you should get out of the building in the best and quickest exit that you've got to you. Okay? Put your hand up if you know where you go after you leave the building. Put your hand up if you know where you should go. Thomas, do you not know? Okay, don't we're lazy people, we need to have a look and see if everyone knows where they're supposed to go. Okay, Hayden Freeman, where are you supposed to go then? Excellent. Out onto the field and line up in your form group. Does anybody else know what order you're supposed to be in? Yes, young man. Yeah, alphabetical order. Okay, now if everybody knows who they should have in front of them and behind them, you only need to remember two names. If everyone gets into that order, it should be sorted very quickly. Okay? You need to leave your bags behind and you need to not run. Okay? Because everything can be replaced. If such a terrible thing should happen, is you've left all of your stuff in and the whole school burns down, we're insured. We can get you your stuff back. The other thing I want you to just realise as well is if you mess around and perhaps you may choose a wrong decision and smoke inside the school and you set a fire alarm on, there was a sprinkler system in this school as well. So if, in effect, it rains inside. Now, if it was to rain in a computer room, you would damage all of the computers. And that's just through being silly and doing something you shouldn't be doing. And all of those computers will be damaged. Who do you think gets the bill for somebody doing that? Yeah, not me at all, Thomas. I don't. The person that did it. So you set the fire alarm off, Thomas, messing around, and your parents will get the bill, and it'll be a couple of million pounds. Okay. Here in the fire alarm then, just to recap, the fire alarm warns of a fire or other emergencies. Don't panic, leave the building by the nearest safe exit, and go to the assembly point. Line up in alphabetical order in your duty group, and do not re-enter the building until you all clear the ship by the fire controller. Now that used to be Mr. Wiles, and I'm led to believe it may well be me and Mr. Clayton now, but you'll be looking at these situations and we will tell you, and then your form tutors will tell you, that you can go back into the building. The other thing to think about about fire marshals, well, there's fire assembly points are out there, but fire marshals wear fluorescent orange jackets and will assist the evacuation point. So there are people in this building that stay in here if it's on fire, just to get you lot out safely. So what you need to do is get out as quickly and as safely as you possibly can. And when that finishes, people will look in the areas, the fire marshals will look in the areas of where you're working, and then they will clear the building and say, yep, I've not got any students. Plus the emergency evacuation plan. If you need assistance during the emergency evacuation of a building, Due to a specific disability, please notify your tutor immediately so that a personal emergency evacuation plan can be completed. Now we do we do know of two people in the school and we put into some play how to get those people out and they know what they're supposed to do. But if for instance you go uh, over the holiday and you break your leg, you will need to make sure that you know how to get out of this building. Because people with broken legs can't use the lift when the fire alarm is on. So we may need to carry you out, or have you carried out. Okay. Medical conditions and allergies. Now this is something we need to know. Okay. Now, you need to inform your form tutor. On a, when you first come into school, you have the registration form. Now some people are in the allergic to nuts, some people are allergic to this, that and the other. But if you don't tell us on your form, we don't know. So it's good to speak to your teacher when you first meet them, your home tutor, and you can say to them, oh, miss, just so that you're aware, I'm allergic to seafood. Okay? I'm allergic to seafood. It's like prawns and crab and all that sort of stuff. And that's that sort of thing we need to know. Now, it's very important for your tutor to be aware of this so they can let other members of staff know. 
First day, this is something really interesting in a moment because lots of people do it the wrong way. Let's have a look up here. First aid assistance can be obtained by contacting the main reception. Now, there are also numerous first aids available within the academy, so familiarise yourself with where they are and who they are. Now, on the doors to all of the staff rooms, you know we've got lots of staff rooms in this school, you'll see pictures of the first aiders, okay? And they will be able to uh, tell you what, what to do and where to go. Now, for any incident that requires urgent help, we send somebody to um, reception to go to the first aid or perhaps a microphone uh, um, an ambulance. Now here's the instruction for you guys though, is that if you are in your classroom and you're feeling sick, etc., you don't just get out and go. Okay, you ask your teacher to call for first aid. Because a lot of people are turning up at the medical room and just sitting there and waiting. That's dangerous. Okay, it's dangerous, it should be happening. Now if you have an accident in school, okay, you need to report it to a member of staff immediately. Okay? And for anything above the shoulders, so a neck or a head injury, you must take someone with you. Okay? Never be on your own with a head injury. Even if a member of staff says, just go to bed. You can say to that member of staff, Miss, sir, I need someone to come with me. Because people forget. They shouldn't, but they do. Okay, so looking at this then, all accidents should be uh, reported so that we can record them. Okay, we have to, as a school, write down all of this information. How you did it. Even near misses. Even near misses. And a near miss might be in a science lesson, okay, where, um, where an experiment goes wrong, and it pisses up and nearly gets you. That's a near miss. It might be in a PE lesson if there's a shot put going and it nearly hits somebody on the foot. Those are near misses that you need to know about those two. Okay. Now, in your lessons, you'll be told about PPE, and that's in, in cooking that might be an apron, in science that might be some goggles or gloves or things like that. But you always be told to do things like that, okay, and use things like that. Now, if you do not, the teacher is still in trouble, okay? So they may tell you, put goggles on. If you keep taking them off, the teacher will be in trouble. But also, you are putting yourself at risk. So your teacher will keep on reminding you to do those sorts of things. Okay, another thing that we find really annoying at the moment is sitting in the corridors with your legs sticking out. We've got hundreds of chairs in this school, and steps, and steps, and steps, and steps. You do not need to be sitting on the floor. Okay? It provides us with a hazard, and it's a trip of hazard. Now, I'm going to just scoot past by violence and aggression. The thing that we need to look at primarily is actually allowing our students to leave their registration time uh, on time. So there is still two minutes to go before the bell should have gone. It really irritates me that people in this day and age can't use a clock. Okay, so one thing I just want to talk to you about is breaks and lunches when 850 people are in this area is it's quite, quite a bit of a mess sometimes. So what you guys need to ensure you do is make sure that you're conducting yourself in a good way. Okay?